Hello everyone, this is Yash Nama. Thank you for joining me on this video. Today we will go through some basic cost concepts. We will try to understand the cost concepts with the example of Candy's coffee shop. Candy is a fictitious character that I have made up for the purpose of our educational videos. Candy is a university student and she recently set up a coffee shop in her university premises. We will look at examples related to the cost concepts in the context of Candy's coffee shop. This will demonstrate the practical relevance of the concepts we will be learning. Firstly, let us understand what do we mean by cost. It is the amount of resource, generally money, dollars, which you let go of or which you sacrifice to achieve a particular objective. It could be buying a product or buying a service. So it is the amount of money you pay to buy a product or a service. Coffee beans, drinking chocolate, electricity, rent, staff salaries and internet are some of the examples of costs incurred by Candy's coffee shop. And costing means understanding and identifying the costs of particular activities and decisions. This is a key part of management accounting. What is a cost object? To explain this in simple terms, anything for which we calculate cost is called a cost object. So if we want to calculate the cost of producing a product, then that product becomes the cost object. And if we want to calculate the cost of offering a service, then that service becomes the cost object. In the context of Candy's coffee shop, if Candy would like to calculate the cost of a cappuccino, which is made and sold at her coffee shop, then that cappuccino becomes the cost object. And if Candy would like to calculate the cost of a carrot cake, which is made and sold at her coffee shop, then that carrot cake becomes the cost object. Similarly, if Candy would like to calculate the cost of a pain au chocolat, which is made and sold at a coffee shop, then that pain au chocolat becomes the cost object. So anything for which you calculate the cost is called a cost object. We can have different classifications of cost based on the needs of managers. We can broadly classify costs into these three categories. We've got direct costs and indirect costs, variable costs and fixed costs, product costs and period costs. These are just three different ways of looking at costs. Any particular cost item could belong to one or more of these categories. For instance, you could have a cost item which is both a direct and variable cost at the same time, and you could have a cost which is both indirect and fixed cost at the same time. Okay, so these are just different ways of looking at costs. Now let us say the total cost is 100 for a particular operation, we can classify the total cost into fixed and variable. Say the fixed component is $40 and variable component is $60. And you can classify the same total cost 100 into direct and indirect costs as well. So let us say $50 of the total 100 are indirect and $50 of the total are direct. So the total cost of 100 does not change, but our classifications are just different ways of looking at the same total costs. We can split the total costs into different categories based on our purposes or needs. Now let's take a look at each of these cost categories one by one. Firstly, let us talk about direct versus indirect costs. 
Now, direct costs are those costs that can be specifically and exclusively be identified with a cost object. If Candy would like to calculate the cost of making a mocha at her coffee shop, then she would be looking at, for instance, the cost of coffee beans or ground espresso. Now, can Candy specifically and exclusively identify how much ground espresso goes into making one medium-sized mocha? Yes, she can clearly, specifically and exclusively identify how much ground espresso is required for making a mocha. For making each medium-sized mocha, she would exactly need 18 grams of ground espresso, not more, not less. Hence, ground espresso is an example of a direct materials cost for a mocha. Similarly, can Candy specifically and exclusively identify how much milk goes into preparing a medium-sized mocha? Yes, she can specifically and exclusively identify how much milk is required for making a mocha. For making each medium-sized mocha, she would need exactly 250 ml of milk. Hence, milk is also an example of a direct materials cost for a mocha. How about drinking chocolate? Can Candy specifically and exclusively identify how much drinking chocolate goes into preparing a medium-sized mocha? Yes, she can specifically and exclusively identify how much drinking chocolate is required for making a mocha. For making each medium-sized mocha, she would exactly need one tablespoon of drinking chocolate. Hence, drinking chocolate is also an example of a direct materials cost for a mocha. So these were some examples of direct costs for a mocha. How about indirect costs? Indirect costs are those costs that cannot be specifically and exclusively be identified with a cost object. For instance, electricity costs. Can Candy specifically and exclusively identify how much electricity is required for making a medium-sized mocha? No, it's not that easy. Because electricity is not only required for making mochas, but electricity is also required for other purposes at her coffee shop, such as for refrigerating the milk, for washing dishes, for cleaning, heating, and so on. Hence, it would be difficult to directly trace how much electricity is required for making a medium-sized mocha. While we could precisely calculate that 18 grams of ground espresso is necessary to make a medium-sized mocha, we cannot in a similar way calculate how much electricity is required for making a mocha. We may try to estimate that, but we cannot precisely and objectively measure it. So that's the difference. Other examples of indirect costs at Candy's coffee shop include water, depreciation of the coffee machine, and so on. It is important to note that indirect costs are also known as overheads. We have to remember two terms which go along direct and indirect costs. Direct costs are traced to cost objects, whereas indirect costs, also known as overheads, are assigned to cost objects. So let us say Candy's coffee shop received an electricity invoice of $200 for a particular month. Based on her operational records and by looking at the technical specs of the electricity devices employed in the coffee shop, Candy estimates that of the 200 electricity bill, $25 might relate to running the coffee machine, $50 might relate to running the ovens, $25 might relate to running the refrigerators and $50 might relate to running the dishwasher and the remaining $50 might relate to lighting, heating and other miscellaneous use. But these are Candy's estimates. 
This allocation is something that can be made based on her experience and based on some records, but this is not precise and accurate. Whereas direct costs are traced and are precise. Candy can trace exactly how much milk is required for making a mocha, 250 mils. How much ground espresso is required for making a medium sized mocha, 18 grams. And how much drinking chocolate goes into making a medium sized mocha, one spoon. So in that sense, direct costs are always traced to cost objects, whereas indirect costs are allocated to cost objects. Now we will look at cost allocation in greater detail in another video. Accounting systems also distinguish between product costs and period costs. Product costs include all the costs that are incurred in acquiring or making a product intended for sale. They are attached to the products and become part of the inventory. Now Candy's coffee shop also supplies cakes to nearby supermarkets. In this case, all the costs that are incurred in producing the cakes would be classified as product costs. For instance, costs incurred to prepare strawberry cakes include cost of purchasing the strawberries, sugar, eggs, flour, cost of icing or cream and other decorative elements used to prepare the strawberry cakes. On the other hand, period costs are all the costs that do not form part of the product costs. For instance, rent, insurance, advertising and marketing costs, telephone and internet expenses and so on. It is important to note that product costs are not necessarily treated as expenses in the period they are incurred. Rather, product costs are treated as expenses in the period in which they are sold. For example, if Candy's coffee shop produced 10 cakes on the last day of an accounting period, say the 30th of June, but those 10 cakes were sold on the first day of the subsequent accounting period, say the 1st of July then the cost of producing those 10 cakes would not be shown as expenses in the income statement for the period ended 30th of June, but would be shown as inventory in the balance sheet as of 30th of June. Whereas period costs are always treated as expenses in the period in which they are incurred. Product costs are also known as manufacturing costs and period costs are also known as non-manufacturing costs. Costs and revenues may vary with different levels of activity. So it is important to predict costs and revenues at different activity levels for many operational decisions and for planning and control purposes. Now let us come back to Candy's coffee shop. Let us say Candy is deciding upon how much coffee beans to buy, how much milk to buy, and how much drinking chocolate to buy for her coffee shop. In making these decisions, she would be interested in trying to estimate the level of activity for the period she intends to buy the raw materials. For instance, during semester time, Candy expects many people to visit the university premises and hence she may be ordering an appropriate amount of coffee beans, milk and other consumables keeping in mind the high estimated activity levels. On the contrary, during semester breaks, Candy expects very few people to visit the university and hence she would reduce her purchase of raw materials and other consumables accordingly. So accountants usefully classify costs into fixed and variable costs. Now let's look at what these fixed and variable costs mean. Variable costs are those costs which vary directly with changes in the level of activity. For example, in Candy's coffee shop, more mochas sold, more drinking chocolate bought, more mochas sold, 
more coffee beans bought and more mocha sold, more milk bought. So these were some examples of variable costs. An important feature to remember of variable cost per unit is that it remains the same at all activity levels. However, as the number of units increase, the total variable costs increase. Remember, variable cost per unit remains the same. However, as the number of units increase, the total variable costs increase. On the other hand, a fixed cost is one which is not affected by changes in the level of activity or output. So, irrespective of whether Candy sells 500 coffees a day or 1000 coffees a day, she would be paying the same rent per month for her coffee shop. She would be paying the same salary for her full-time staff and she would be paying the same for her internet costs every month irrespective of the level of sales. These were some examples of fixed costs for Candy's coffee shop. An important feature to remember about the total fixed cost is that it remains the same for all levels of activity. However, as the number of units increase, the fixed cost attributable to each unit decreases. Next, we have semi-variable costs. Semi-variable costs are also known as mixed costs. Semi-variable costs include both a fixed component and a variable component. Hence, the variable part of semi-variable costs changes with the level of activity, whereas the fixed part of semi-variable costs will remain the same irrespective of the level of activity. Electricity cost can be seen as an example of semi-variable cost. If you look at any electricity bill, you will typically see two sets of charges, a supply charge and a usage charge. A supply charge is something that every subscriber will have to pay each month irrespective of the level of use. This is the charge for having the electricity line connected to your property. On the other hand, usage charge is based on actual usage for each month. So if Candy uses more electricity in a month, she will have to pay higher usage charges for the electricity used. Next, we will move on to semi-fixed costs, also known as step-fixed costs. Now these costs are fixed within a relevant range. However, they may change with a constant amount at critical activity levels. For instance, Candy might be able to run her coffee shop by having one staff member serve up to 25 clients. However, when the number of clients increase to anywhere between 26 to 50, then she would need two staff members to serve the clients. And when the number of clients increase to anywhere between 51 to 75, then she would need three staff members and so on. I hope this video on basic cost concepts was useful to you. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thank you.